Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel where we draw on our walls with Sharpie. We have absolutely no idea what we are doing ever. Jenna Cabin Wesley, stop walking over it. This ain't happening, this is not gonna work. But in the midst of the absolute chaos, we somehow find a way to have an absolute blast working with one another. And <laughs> got stories, got time to speak. Hey, it's Franklin. All the while, while trying to learn new skills and hopefully one day going from DIY no-nos to DIY pro pros. I also do everything around here in my PJs. So hi, hey, if you're new here, my name's Marina. Let's go. Welcome to another episode in this mobile home mansion makeover extravaganza series. We're taking our 1991 double wide and transforming it into our mobile mansion. And if you've missed the prior parts to this series, I'll have the playlist linked down below where you can see start to finish what we've done to date to this double wide. Without further ado, let's do the daggone things. We're starting off by getting this dungeon light out of here and we're replacing it with an LED light fixture and we're doing that first so we can actually see what we're doing in here. <laughs> I used to use the regular old uh, wire nuts. These are okay, these are good, right? I don't stand by these anymore though. I use these bad boys, these are connectors. These are not only simpler, but I feel like they're safer because once a wire goes in there, I mean, they don't just slip out. These things are really bad about if your wires aren't crimped together good, a wire can slip out. Like literally just now, I just looked up here and pulled this light fixture down and the ground wire wasn't even inside the ground wire that went to the light fixture. So, I mean, that right there shows that while these are good, these have been, you know, used for ages. These are the bad boys right here. So this is a three porter. So, you know, if I need to connect three different wires into it, I can, but they also have four ports, which I do have, and then they also have five ports. As we go throughout the trailer, we are gonna be changing all these old light fixtures into these. The yellow ones just ain't doing it. They remind me of a piece of cheese. <laughs> there have been numerous times that I've walked by one of these light switches and seriously thought I saw a craft singles just chilling on the wall. In my house, that's like the normal. Anything's possible. So it's valid that I think that when I pass it. We're removing all of these battens. We're doing this in every room we're making over. The battens have gotta go. They're a pain in the butt, but they're also really hard to decorate around. So I might as well if I'm going to take some of them off of a room I might as well take them all off of the walls and grit my teeth and get it over with and make things right I would have it undone no I hurt you yeah I was blind the blame is mine yeah I feel the weight on my shoulders know that I regret it hope I can repay you for what I've done know that
even though this job is extremely time consuming, it is really worth it because once you see that smooth finished wall, you're like, okay, that wasn't so bad. It's kind of like when you have a baby, you're like, never again during the process. But once it's done and over with, you're like, maybe I could do that again. Maybe I could do that again. <laughs> I was avoiding taking the top perimeter batten off, but then once I got done, I was like, okay, you know what? I can do that. So I went back in and did the top perimeter. I'm using this hand sander. You guys have seen me use this a little bit. I love this thing for tight areas, like places I can't get my big motorized sander in. And whenever I don't have a whole lot to sand, I like using these. I just put a new piece of sandpaper on here. This is the three M one. And I don't know if that stands for three millimeter or three megameter or three marina. I don't know. It stands for something though. This, I'm gonna go in with this on the areas that I've taken the battens off and put my drywall tape and joint compound. The way that I do my drywall tape and joint compound, I don't know if it's the right way. I don't know if it's the professional way, but it's the way I do it and mine turn out really, really good. So this is what I do. I take off the batten and then I layer a joint compound layer on there. This is the fishnets of DIY. <laughs> Does it not look like fishnet pantyhose? Pretty woman. This stuff is a lifesaver. I get the ones that look like fishnets and not the plain ones just because honestly they look cooler and when you touch them, they're like, they, they scratch my brain for some reason. I don't know. I like using these though because then when I lay it on the joint compound, the joint compound kind of pushes through the little hose in it and then I go on top of it and I put another layer of joint compound to cover up this tape completely. I'm really just using that first layer of joint compound as a way to stick this to the wall even though it's sort of sticky. Like it's got a little bit of a stick to it. Even though it's a little bit sticky, I'm using that first layer of joint compound as something to stick this to. And then the layer that goes over top of it, I'm using it to cover it up. Sometimes you have to do two layers over top of it. With my big ones here in the in the living room, whenever we did these, I had to do like two or three layers on top of it. But for up here, this little area, I'm not, I don't have to do two layers. I didn't even touch the, the battens on the corners because those would have been very, very tricky. I, there's no way I could have sanded those with the stuff that I have. I would have had to get a special sanding tool. That's not in the budget. So I left those and I'm gonna try to conceal it with white paint and caulk and see how well that looks. The good thing about it is it's not very noticeable and it is in the corners and it's all gonna be painted white here in a minute. So I think we'll be okay. said marina i'm gonna need you to do a bold wallpaper you had me thinking about it and i was like oh girl but i don't know if y'all seen the price of the wallpaper listen i could have got dollar tree contact paper they have some pretty black and white ones but i have a specific kind i want and it's not in the budget for right now but you got me thinking about it and i was like girl we're gonna do that we are gonna do that friend i like the basic look of this white it feels clean it feels fresh it doesn't feel cluttered at all it feels very minimalistic in here Considering, I, I mean, in, in reality, I really don't have a whole lot going on here in the main living area. Most of it is over at the homeschool area, and that's that's inevitable because that's a heavily used area. So that's where the bulk of the stuff in this living room is. Other than that, it's pretty much minimalistic. So I'm digging this bright white look with my added color, like my green and stuff. I don't, I can't do the white sterile look. I, I can't. I would love to do that in my house, but it would drive me nuts. It's too psychwardy for me. So I like the contrast between the warm woods, the white walls and the greenish color as my accent color paired with some earthy browns. I really like that combination. And I think it's a happy medium between eclectic and simple and clean and fresh. 
So with all of that being said, I'm going to go ahead and continue the white in this hallway. And then for the time being, I'm going to do this cute little design, hand-drawn design on the walls. I like contrasting patterns and I like contrasting colors. I really, really want a bold, bold wallpaper in here. But even with me not having the funds in the envelope right now, like I don't really know exactly what I want. I know I want it to be bold, but I don't know... In what department? Do I want floral? Do I want the geometric style? What do I really want? So for the time being, while I'm saving up for wallpaper, I'm going to have this as a white background with some sort of chevron herringbone style design on it. And it's it, it might be temporary. It might be like a week temporary. I might look at it and be like, oh no, because it can't be perfect because it's hand drawn and it's it's pretty big hand drawn. So like, it's not like I'm just like doodling little doodles. Like I'm having to work on straight lines. I'm having to be very precise and I am, <laughs> I can't, I can't be precise. We all know that. Like I cannot be precise to save my life. It was a lot for me to ask this of me, but you know, I'm constantly getting myself in pickles. So for the time being, I really, really wanted this herringbone chevron style contrasted black and white sort of thing because I knew that would pop as this back wall back here and I knew it would pair really pretty with the green I have throughout the house. I didn't want to go with shiplap because my doors are going to be the wood accents for this room. Y'all check out my artwork. They say that art is a manifestation of the heart. I think they're right. So before we work on the other two, this is going to be our trial run. So we need to go on and get the doorknob on there, make sure it still works and everything. That way we know if there's going to be any problems ahead of us when we do the other two. Everything we do here on this channel is by trial and error. We don't know what we're doing. We have no idea. We have never been DIY people up until this season of our life. So we're learning as we go. And that's exactly why I don't call this channel a tutorial channel. Nothing I do is a tutorial because I don't know what I'm doing. I can't teach you guys to do anything. Like outside of this DIY stratosphere, I, there's not much I can teach you. I don't know a whole lot. But what I do know is I do know that we don't give up and that we usually get what we want by doing trial and error and figuring out what we can do to make what we want happen. Figure so y'all remember the doorknobs that I showed you? Well, Shane took them out and we were going to put them on and I was sitting and I was sitting, <laughs> and I was sitting hey, there gone. on the uh, porch looking at them and I put them under the sun and guess what? They weren't matte black, they were bronze. So he went back. Tomato, tomato. And he got me the black ones, so now we gotta put these black ones on there. Lowe's is pretty good about exchanging stuff, so. Especially if it's just like a cosmetic thing. They where know me. You send your husband to Lowe's and By he picks point, a bronze like, one. Oh, there he comes. So tell them what we're doing. Okay, well, I'm putting a doorknob on. That's what I'm doing. But. And I would tell them the modification we have to make. The modification, well, I'm still figuring out the modification. I don't have the answer to that yet. But the main thing is is that the door is thicker than most doors because of the frame we're putting on. Meaning that when I put this on, it's like getting to like right there. They have pieces that extend that, but you have to like order them on the internet. Ain't nobody got time for that. So I've got to come up with something to extend this. And I'm wondering if I've got maybe like a bit that could, I could stick in there, you know what I'm saying? And it would extend it out far enough, does that make sense? Because the other option is I'm gonna have to cut the hole bigger. The thing about those circle saws is they have to have something in the middle to kind of hold it yeah. in place where they'll dance. And you'll see on the back there, I'll have to caulk a little bit of area back there where I tried it and it, I mean, it just danced on that wood. So our original design had two sides going down because we were gonna box it in. Problem is, Doorknobs are not made to be on a door that thick. They do have doorknobs for thick doors. Unfortunately, our Lowe's, our Home Depot, our Walmart, everywhere around us doesn't have them. I've taken this piece off. We see that I've got the door, the doorknob works, right? If we get real creative with the design, we can make sure that this is still functioning the way it's supposed to and it can be put on the way it's supposed to be while also making it look really good. So now we just got to get creative. And that's where fearfully creative <laughs> that's, that's comes That's where you play. come in, baby. That's a lot, though, because... So I'm... Th well, think of this. You're asking me to completely revamp, like, flip my brain upside down. It won't be the first time we've had to do something like that. I know, but so it's hard look, to flip my brain upside down. Think of it like this. You have your... You, you she know, ain't used to your, You've got Let's think like of some that. stuff. 
So what we ended up having to do is doing uh, using another piece of wood and then making this hole bigger so we can sit the doorknob down in there. Hopefully it'll work and I won't have to compromise my design. <laughs> if I have to, I will. I mean, it's it's not a huge deal, but when I envision these doors, I envision them a particular way. And it's hard for me to see them any other way. If I have to, of course I will. It's not that big of a deal, but it'll definitely take some brain work from me though. Because once I envision something, my heart is set on it. That's just how my brain works. Thankfully, I have a Shane that he will take what I want and he will try every possible alternative to doing whatever he needs to get done in order to make it work. So he's tried this. He's took a whole new piece of wood, used a bigger whole circle thing, saw thing. He knows, blade, whole blade saw. I don't know, saw blade hole. <laughs> he's used a bigger one of those so that we can sit the doorknob down in there and it won't compromise the doorknob and its function at all. He's always trying to make whatever I want to happen, happen. And I'm grateful for that. Sometimes it's impossible because sometimes my, my thoughts and my ideas are just unachievable <laughs> at the level of DIY we're at and and you know the funds that we have it's unrealistic sometimes I just go above and beyond it's unrealistic but most of the time he makes it work all right turn the doorknob I'm gonna let you do it <gasps> it, works. Works. it works. we're not gonna He's having the time of his life out here. We're not going to waste the piece of wood that we had a hole in. We're just going to cut it for the top and the bottom pieces. That way, we're reusing this and nothing's getting wasted at all. Also, I have chicken casserole in the crock pot and it is smelling amazing. You can smell it all the way down the hill. who was wholesome little bear little bear how'd you know he was wholesome he was he okay. didn't do a bad thing i loved little bear and his dad was so cool that's where he taught him that song whether the weather is cold or whether the weather is hot whether the weather whatever the weather whether you like it or not <laughs> i think that ruby from max and ruby like she was you know like max you know how max like gave the memes of the you know, like he's always up to something. Like I always said, it made me think of Cameron, how Cameron's wheels are always turning. You know? <laughs> Ruby was just a jerk, though. No, Max, you can't play over here. So then he gets into some kind of mischief, and it's all that Max did it again. It's like Max wouldn't have done it if Ruby hadn't been a jerk. Watch your little bed.
we're in the groove of totally revamping these old 90s doors. I'm loving this. The barn doors turned out so good that I was like, you know what? Instead of going and buying a $300 door at Lowe's, three of those for all three doors we needed in the hallway, why don't we just revamp the doors we already have? It makes them thicker, so it's a little bit trickier because they're on hinges and not like barn door hardware, but it's doable. We just had to take off the doorstop wood at the front of the door, replace it with another doorstop, just scoot it a little bit forward so that the door could fit. And that was basically the only alteration we had to make when it came to like the hinges and the doors being functional. Now, these are not completely remade doors. I didn't completely wrap them in wood. I just wanted the front to be like, a, it's sort of like a decor style. Like I wasn't adamant on making these doors something else. I just wanted to dress them up a little bit. So I did the wood on the front and then I painted the rest of it white so that on the inside of the door it's just it looks like a white door but on the outside of the door it looks like a completely different actual wood door i hadn't yet done that in this clip yet i hadn't sanded it or painted the sides of the back white or anything like that i'm just sanding down the front right now and then i'm gonna go in and stain it the stain i'm using is a stain i use throughout the rest of my house it's the special walnut yeah special walnut it did not adhere to the poplar the same way it did to the white wood. So the poplar is the sheet that's uh, on the base of the door and the white wood is what we trimmed it out with. The poplar took the stain totally different because it's totally different wood, but it kind of worked out in my favor because it gave it a little bit of dimension. I also whitewashed over this with white gel stain, so it really didn't matter. I was a little bit worried when I was initially doing this and I was like, oh, that stain is dark, man. <laughs> it's not ever this dark. I was worried, but... Once I got the white gel stain on there and it whitewashed it out and everything, it gave it dimension and I actually really like it that way. shocks me to see how different this door looks whenever it's stained and then when it has the whitewash on it I feel like I do a whole lot of work to get it to where it looks like it's basically just built with raw wood it's just with a little bit of a different color like an undertone it's like all this work and what did it get me it got me a door that looks like I haven't even touched it with stain but I like the light wood in this house so if I had to go through all of this to get it basically back to what you see there on the right side of the screen the door the raw door that hasn't been touched yet <laughs> and I guess I guess it's worth it it is a little bit of a different tone and you can tell that it's been stained versus the raw wood that you can tell it has not been touched and it looks like it's just right off the rack at Lowe's so there is a difference it's just so similar But I can't hear the signs you describe Don't be ashamed We can't always leave this place and go where no one knows our names Pack your bags We never needed their permission to believe in ourselves So come with me We could spend the week and do it everything they 
said we never do In the universe we're just causing trouble But nothing can hurt us in our bubble For better or worse in an uphill struggle No regrets and windows down Down, down, down Let's escape the silence together Just say the word I don't know when we'll get there But we're still young In their universe We're just causing trouble But nothing can hurt us in our bubble For better or worse In an uphill struggle the completely wrong paint roller for this job. I had a cabinets and doors paint roller and I needed a paint roller like I used in the living room whenever I painted it white because this thing, this hallway took almost four coats of paint, like three and a half because after the third time there were still some areas that needed to be covered up a little bit more. Three and a half coats on this hallway all because I was using the wrong brush and I was too stubborn to go get the right brush. <laughs> guys I found an awesome caulking tool at Lowe's and this thing is gonna save us on paper towels and toilet paper. Isn't this so, like, oh my God. Yeah.
we're not hanging these just yet, but we need to make sure that the placement is right. So we're hanging them up to make sure we got it in the right position before we drill like a billion holes into the trim. We had to put up and take down these doors. I don't know how many times in order to get the brackets or the hinges in the right spot. Now is the nerve wracking part. I've got to hand paint on this wall. I got hand paint on this wall. Anytime I put makeup on, I got streaks going down my neck. I got an uh, orange face. I got my makeup's everywhere. And I got to paint, permanently paint on this wall. Black. <laughs> I got to permanently hand paint black on this wall. It's going to be interesting. Look how good that door looks. We still got to put the door stroppers up, but that looks good. Huh? So what are they doing? We're putting emojis. Oh, do you know what makes me mad about the internet? What makes me mad about the internet? They can't just let people be happy. He was proud. He was showing her off. Mm-hmm. What are we doing? We're putting it up there. Uh, huh? Well, don't get, don't get I'm excited. I'm not sticking it. Yeah, lady. <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay, wait, wait. Move your arm. I, I, I okay, can't move my arm. Okay, hold okay, on. I, I say we just, we stick the top here. Okay. Right here. Okay. Don't do nothing. Don't do anything drastic. Hold that thought. Oh, I'm so nervous. This is it. Don't get scared now. I need to fix this. I don't know why it's doing that. Hey. I need to fix hey. that too. No, you need to, you need to stop. Oh, Look good. and listen. Oh, this is going to be crazy. I had to paint with black paint, Grandpa. Oh, what, what? If it gets messed up, it's messed up for life. You have a hard time focusing up. Huh? You have a hard time focusing up, don't you? Yeah. Michael Bolton, we really need you to focus up. Roger that. Let me try that with another film. Life is a box of chocolate. My name is Forrest Gump. Not better. No, I'm not the only tool in the shed. I, I give Jenny all my love. I gotta make sure that that looks right. Our house is crooked. Yeah, it can't be your measuring skill. What the flip is diagonal? Wait, let me see here. I don't know that look well. Either my head's crooked or the wall is crooked. Both. Seven seas, a mystical quest. I remember now. Where? Colton was playing with it, saying that he had a reverse gun go. And I told him specifically <laughs> to put it back in my pool. And where does he Wait, put it? Wait, what did he call it? A reverse yo-yo. <laughs> <laughs> Why are so you not scared. putting the tape sideways? That would help guide you. Okay, you can do this. It's you and me. It's just paint, right? It's just paint. Mm. Mm -mm. Ah. Yeah. My heart was set on having these daggone diagonal lines on this wall. We had to start and stop and stop start and fix and paint and paint over so many times it wasn't even funny I would draw like six lines and it would look terrible so we'd go in and have to paint over it try to wash it off and it wouldn't come off we put paint all over it then I would try to do six more lines have to paint right over it I started out with one paintbrush couldn't use that paintbrush it was too like funky so I had to move on to another paintbrush turns out that paintbrush didn't work either turned out it's not a paintbrush problem it's a marina problem <laughs> it's me hi I'm the problem <laughs> I even gave the paintbrush to Shane because you know he's an artist like that's what he does like by trade he's a cartoonist he's an illustrator I was like surely he can draw a straight line on this wall no <laughs> I even got out a ruler we even got out the painter's tape no that nothing was working I'm trying to get all this junk out of Wesley stop walking over it this ain't happening this is not gonna work different approach to the beat my favorite so keep it on repeat please don't let it fade just say you want i follow every sound just say you want i won't let you down so we
attempt a billion. I just came back from Walmart with these paint pens. I'm just gonna put these up against the ruler and try it. Because, yeah. option that gave me anything close to what I was wanting so I used it and it worked pretty okay and then I just went in and I just made the lines thicker because I wanted them thicker and the paint pen was given like thin so I went in to make them thicker but that's really all I had to do. Shane is putting the new door stopper up right now because we had to take the old one off. So this is what I meant by it was too thin so I just went in and thickened it up. We went through and just put quarter round on the bottom because we didn't want the baseboards to affect like the design of the, of the, what is it, upside down chevron? I have no idea. Of the Sharpie marks. <laughs> we didn't want the baseboards to affect that. So we just went with quarter round and then Shane, the caulking master, caulked around it and got it looking real spiffy and nice. The project isn't done until it's caulked and trimmed out. Look at this. I'm loving it. It's different. And I'm finding that in this house, I'm loving trying out different stuff. It's given boho. It's given different. It's given contrast. I'm digging it. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I hope y'all have a blessed morning, even night, whatever it is, wherever you're at. Know that I love you, but Jesus loves you so much more. I'll see y'all later.